inviting me. I wish I could have been there because I know I would have learned a tremendous amount uh, from participating in per person. Uh, but I'm delighted that you included me. And uh, as Mark said, I run some uh, strategic programs uh, for NetApp, including a leadership and development effort that we've been uh, implementing for the last seven years. And I also run our academic alliances, and so our, our partnerships um, with people like you in helping connect uh, the tech industry to what you're teaching today. And I've got uh, 12 years at NetApp uh, and 20 altogether in tech. Uh, working at places like uh, Hewlett Packard and Xerox and a couple of startups in between. But I actually started my tech career when I got a degree from a community college here in Silicon Valley. Um, I was hired right out of my classes into HP. So I really owe my success uh, in getting that great uh, education. Uh, so that's why I'm, I'm passionate and I wanted to participate today. But I'm not a diversity expert, so I'm going to tell you my views and my perspectives as a woman in the technology world, and I'm going to share what I see as some of the challenges and also highlight where there's opportunity. So uh, before I get into uh, those views, I also want to tell you a little bit about NetApp because we're not a consumer brand. We are a big business infrastructure company. We're a $6 billion Fortune 500 company with the world's number one branded storage operating system. And I'm part of our go-to-market organization, so that includes sales and customer support and sometimes marketing. Uh, and the reason I've been at NetApp for 12 years, the, the longest tenure in uh, my career at one company, is because of our culture. Uh, we focus on getting things done, on teamwork, on integrity, on taking care of our community, and there are amazing people at this company. So when I share my perspectives, I want you to have that grounding that NetApp has been consistently ranked as one of the world's uh, best places to work, um, and, and I really enjoy being here. Um, so today I'm going to take about 10 minutes and focus on three big areas. I'll share my perspective, the big picture in the technology industry around diversity, and then I'm going to get very personal and share some of my experiences, and then I'll get to where we're focused today and opportunities to partner. So that's what I plan to cover, and uh, I'll just go ahead and jump in. But if, if you have a question, I can probably hear you. Uh, you can certainly interrupt, uh, but I will talk a little bit fast uh, just to get through these three topics. So I want to start out with the, the value of data. I work at a data storage and management company, and I think data is critical. But when we're having the conversation around diversity, it's not always something you can get your hands on. Uh, the, the article I'm highlighting here, CNN Money actually used a FOIA request to the Department of Labor to try to get some idea of how diverse tech companies are, and they were stymied. Uh, of the 20 uh, companies they wanted data on, five of them, Cisco, Dell, eBay, Ingram Micro, and Intel actually provided information, but other federal contractors, Apple, Google, HP, IBM, and Microsoft all said, you can't have my data. Uh, and I think it's really interesting, even though this is a little bit old, um, the, the data was from uh, 2006 to 2010, I think it's interesting to think about why companies wouldn't want to share that data. At Cisco, they reported that women in their sales organization made up about 20% of the population, and at Intel, they said that technical roles were filled only 18% by women, and when you look at ethnicity, 15% were Hispanic and 7% were black. Now, having that data and access to that data is absolutely critical to drive change because tech companies measure and inspect the things that are valuable to them. And I think if we're going to drive change in an industry, we also need access to that information. So I'm going to switch over to what Facebook did. They were much more willing to be open about where things stand, and they actually publicly posted for anybody uh, some information about their diversity goals and the metrics. And so I think it's wonderful that they've publicly stated that they want to be more inclusive. And they've published really challenging data. This is just a snippet of that talking about gender and ethnicity in technical roles. 
And so you can see that they're very male-oriented and a very small sprinkling of minorities. So that paints a really big picture of opportunity. There's definitely room to grow. And so where do they think we need to focus? And th this is interesting that Facebook said, um, really, uh, they made this big point, you can help. It comes down to public education in their view. There's a critical role that you play, and I think that that validates. It's a huge endorsement for the mission that you're on today to make the workforce more diverse. But on the other hand, I want to highlight here that this is a little bit of that technical, well, it's not our fault. Um, and we, so we can't ignore the role that our companies play in driving this agenda, that we need to be painting a big picture, painting a vision of the success we want and striving towards that and putting together initiatives and goals that are going to get us there. So I'm actually highlighting Facebook because they are so public. And I mentioned that a lot of companies aren't. Uh, and NetApp is one of those companies that hasn't published a lot of our diversity perspectives. So I wanted to highlight why I'm not hi giving you all the NetApp details. Uh, I think it's very interesting that there's a breadth of companies and their willingness to share. So what are we specifically doing in industry? And this is, this is a blend. There's a couple of NetApp examples on the slide, and then there are several from the rest of the industry, uh, Facebook included. And so I want to talk about where we're actually making efforts. Where are we investing to drive this change? And a piece of that is sponsoring that future talent. It's the recognition that we need to reach very young into our future workforce 10 or 15 years before they'll be knocking on our doors to support them and sponsor them and show them what opportunities look like in the tech world. And so sponsoring future talent is critical. Then we need to make sure our doors are open wide, that we are actually inviting people in to join us. And so that might mean that we have to look harder to find the types of people we need to have diversity in the workplace. And then we need to inspect ourselves and say, what are we doing? What behaviors are we living today that are preventing us from getting the type of employees we want to see? Uh, and so we've put programs in place, certainly at NetApp, with um, organizations like Watermark and the Clayman Institute, and we have a thriving women in technology program at NetApp. There's also, of course, you know, we're talking about the tech industry, there's tech solutions that are helping companies identify candidates in ways that are going to be less exclusive. And so Textio is a tool that NetApp is using actually to make sure that our job descriptions are not excluding the type of candidates we want to see. And interviewing.io is a really cool site that actually helps create a blind interview process. And so we can judge people on their merits and potentially not on something like uh, gender or ethnicity. But these are all small initiatives. And what's really important to me is to think about the big picture. Because what we need to change is the culture. And that's going to take us a lot longer to to implement. And I think that um, I highlight John Cotter here because I'm really passionate about transformational change. Our program, um, our leadership and development program is founded on his eight steps for successful change. Uh, and so we know we have a sense of urgency in the industry and, and potentially it's even debatable how urgent the diversity uh, urgency is today. But that's just one part of the process and we need to be measuring ourselves and thinking about the passion, the dedication, and the amount of time it's going to take to drive these changes back into the culture and back into business. So let's, uh, I want to pause here and actually switch from big picture goals uh, in the tech industry and talk a little bit about my personal experience at NetApp. And again, uh, this is not the, the formal diversity perspective as much as it is me wanting to share uh, what it feels like to be working at NetApp in the last couple of years as, as a woman. And so <laughs> I, I thought we could talk about changing behaviors based on these three questions. And, and again, this is introspective for me. So when we look to provide leadership opportunities, do we really consider all the talent we have? And I'll give you an example. So I'm, I'm running this leadership program where we have annually about 350 people apply globally to participate, but we only have 45 to 50 spots to fill. And what would happen is we'd have a selection committee that would give me a list of recommended uh, participants. And 
I was shocked when I got a list that was 100% male. I thought, it cannot be possible that there are no talented women in our entire organization. And when I brought this up to the VP of HR, he challenged me. He said, well, maybe we don't have any talented women. Maybe they don't belong on this team. And I actually had to go back and run my own reports and say, we have 20% women in our go-to-market organization, and I demand that we have 20% women on this team. And so what I had also noticed is that when we have teams with no women, they actually aren't very successful. So I was very personally passionate about changing the way we provide leadership opportunities to women. And when I think about item number two, what unconscious biases prevent us from giving opportunities to women? Uh -uh. One year we had a candidate, a female candidate, who was pregnant, and she was told maybe she should consider postponing her membership. What was shocking to me was we had a lot of dad-to-be's, but dads-to-be were never asked uh -huh. to postpone their membership. And so we had a long conversation, and you know what? She was successful. She stayed and she participated in the team. In fact, she was a team leader in this program. So I think we have to question these biases. Are we asking women and men the same questions? And then the last piece, do we even notice what we're missing if we don't have visibility to the people who aren't in the room with us? For seven years, I've been working on a global program where we work across borders. We have a very diverse team and we learn so much about language, about culture, about religion, about what's important in the world. It's tremendous to feel globally connected. But that was by deliberate design, and it was a conscious choice. We have to choose to change these behaviors because it's not easy. It's really easy to meet with the people who are right in your time zone and not think globally and bring in other opinions and views. And I think just little things like inviting people in are critical. And one other topic that's personal to me before I get into NetApp particulars, I wanted to talk about this idea of mentors. So how did I get where I started 20 years ago to where I am today? And I'll just I'll shorten that a little bit and say when I got hired at NetApp 12 years ago, I was hired by a single mother. And I'm a single mother. And she mentored me, and she coached me, and she provided me opportunities, and I could see myself in her. She was a vice president, and I was an individual contributor. And over time, she always gave me opportunities to do more. So what happens to women and minorities when they sit down at the table and there's nobody that looks like them or feels like them or has the same challenges? And that's the question I want to ask. If we don't have role models in leadership positions, how are we going to drive diversity? So I'm going to leave those big pictures on the table, and I'm going to talk a little bit about um, some concrete things that are happening at NetApp today. And again, uh, diversity is really important to me, uh, but I am not going to represent all of the corporate NetApp uh, diversity perspective. Uh, I, I put this together myself because I wanted to tell you without providing metrics that we are really focused on hiring diverse leaders. Uh, and um, without any commentary, I'll say, here's our leadership team today. Here's our executive leadership team and who's sitting at that table. And so, you know, based on the picture I'm painting, I think we have a lot of work to do here. This is not the entire VP community, but just the executives, the C staff. And so in order to drive a different picture, we are going to hire a diversity leader. And this has been on the to-do list of our executive vice president, Gwen McDonald, for a little bit of time now. Um, and I think the commitment is that we would get somebody hired in the next three months who's going to help us set a more strategic corporate vision and establish goals and start to direct specific investments in that area. Because we do have a really passionate, dedicated, and uh, excellent university relations hiring team who've been bringing great people in. And they do have a specific goal uh, this fiscal year to make all of our new college graduate hires 50% female and 20% minority. And while I'm not able to share the statistics for the reasons I mentioned earlier, we're probably outperforming on the uh, gender category and still uh, aspirationally working towards that minority goal. 
So those are uh, fabulous focus areas for us because, again, that means you and I, we can partner and try to make that a reality. One of the programs I want to highlight in our go-to-market organization, specifically for sales, uh, systems engineers, and our technical support team, is a new college grad program sponsored in our business to hire 30 incremental new college grads. Um, those are just in the Americas, and then uh, overseas as well, another two dozen. Uh, but this is a great opportunity for us to really um, find new roles for people to fill uh, and, and meet, again, that, those goal um, parameters. So we've been running several activities that are also very targeted and focused at going to the places where we can um, find the talent. And that's uh, a big investment I think NetApp has made in, in making sure that the door is wide open, that we're reaching out through diverse talent channels to find as many candidates as possible. And so we're also, uh, make, we have efforts around talent mapping, uh, people that we want to target and bring into NetApp. And then uh, thinking about um, how, how we keep these doors wide open and we start looking in new places for people who might not look like us. So I'm going to take a deep breath and say I think I just talked um, quite a bit, at pretty fast, and I might not have answered all your questions. But with all that in mind, um, if you have questions, uh, this is what was top of mind for me. How do we partner? You know, based on what I shared, do you have concerns or challenges? And then what could NetApp do to help you? What kind of help can you provide for uh, recruiting uh, graduates from IT program? So we have a really strong university relations team. And we've done things, um, you know, in, in I would say very early stages of recruiting. We have guest lecture series with students who are in technical programs so that we can get them thinking about a company like NetApp and what it would be like to work in the tech industry. Um, so we try to build those relationships early. And then we also have the, the on-campus uh, teams who will go out and meet with uh, students and talk about what a NetApp career would look like. We have an internship program uh, that we run every summer, and so there's also opportunities to come in and test the water. Uh, so there's a, a lot of different ways, actually, if we think about the, the partnership of NetApp. We want to build those relationships early, so we have um, a, a deep bench and a big pipeline because I, I'm not just thinking about NetApp. I'm actually thinking about NetApp partners and also future customers. Um, there's a huge tech industry benefit for students to learn about technology that they might be making decisions to purchase one day in the future. So I think really broadly about that. And we need people in tech, who have a technical background in roles like sales and marketing. So when we think about jobs they might be getting, they might not be just going into engineering. We have uh, an engineering student who is a, a sales engineer um, who I, she's actually a new college grad and she came uh, and presented to me as one of the guests, or presented with me as one of the guest lecturers uh, just two weeks ago for Virginia Tech. So I think it's really important that we, we try to role model um, for people that there's not just, if you get a technical d degree, your job might not be uh, in a traditional engineering or IT role. You might be selling that technology or you might be supporting that technology or you might be helping to market that technology. There's a lot of different ways to think about it. So sorry for the long answer. So my email is on the screen there. I'm adams at netapp.com if you have another question. And it was lovely to present remotely. Thank you so much for the invitation. Thanks, Mercedes.